All right, good morning. good morning. Thank you for being here. My topic this morning is what's the big idea? I don't know if anybody's ever said that to you. Um, and, I, and I have some definite thoughts about what the big idea is. Um, <clears throat> I think after years of study and initiation, the idea that people were often initiated into was something that Jesus taught. It's done unto you as you believe. You think, well, how, how can that be? Well, that's so because the universe responds with mechanical regularity, Ernest Holmes says in the textbook, to your predominant belief because there's a spiritual law that's involved. Um, so you, your desires and actions have to be um, consistent with what you say you want. You know, what people do so often is they say one thing and do another. They do one thing and they say another. And so because there's not agreement there, it's very hard for something greater, something of a greater good to, to burst forward in their life. But the law that we're working with, be very clear, the law is definite. You know, that, that you, you entertain failure and you will produce failure. You know, even though you say you want success. You know, you entertain unlovable and you will produce unlovable, even though you say you want lovable. Because, you know, you know what it's like? The soil does not argue with the type of seed that you plant, right? The soil's job is just to receive the seed and help it grow, right? And so neither does spiritual law. It doesn't argue with you about what you're planting in the law. Because each of us, each of us is a center of divine consciousness, right? We are each emanations of this infinite divine consciousness. And so we don't have to experience what everybody else is experiencing. I love this, right? You don't have to experience what you read in the papers just because other people are experiencing. You don't have to read what you see on the news just because other people are experiencing. That's fine. That's their experience, but it doesn't have to be your own. You have dominion over your consciousness, therefore you have dominion over much of what's taking place in your life. You know, you can create the kind of world you want to live in. I believe that's absolutely available to all of us. You know, today you can change your thought and think creatively whatever you want to think. Again, I want to say it is what you think consistently about yourself with conviction that you become an expression, right? So when people say things like, and, you, and when they say stuff like this, notice that people say it with enormous feeling, right? They say, things never work out for me. Ugh. You can just feel it just sucks the life out of the room when somebody says that, right? So there's all this energy around something like that. And when the law gets that seed, things never work out for me, the universe says, okay, Kind of an interesting choice, but okay. Or, or, or if you say the other direction, everything is always working out for my highest good, my greatest fulfillment. The universe says, okay to that, terrific. You know, if you say nothing good can come from this, the universe says, okay. But if you say, I don't know how, but I believe that good will come from this, the universe says, okay, we'll make that happen. So, you know, over 2,500 years ago, the Buddha said the mind is everything. What you think you become. The Buddha knew that over a couple thousand years ago. So it makes sense to me, if I could rule my mind, in other words, if I could really have dominion over my mind, I could really have dominion over my entire life. You know, if we could, if we could rule our mind, if we could have dominions, we could rule our world. And I mean this in the most healthy, constructive way. Uh, there is presently in each of us, I think, a tremendous energy available to be harnessed and utilized to guide us into the joy of a more satisfying and successful experience of life. I think every aspect of your life can be affected by the way you think. I hope you realize that because you're in the science of mind now. See, I have a sister who te teases me all the time and she's always saying to me, she was saying, you have such a good attitude about life. You're so optimistic about everything. And I say, well, thank you. You know, I've tried the alternative. I've tried not having a good attitude. I tried it very seriously. It did not work out very well for me or anybody nearby, you know? So, and, and I would suggest that perhaps many of us have tried that and, and not had a good result. You know, the universe is just waiting to prove you right. That's something that I think is fascinating. That the universe wants to prove you right. My life is terrific. The universe says, yes, let's prove you right. I hate everything about my life. The universe says, yes, let's prove you right. Now, if that's so, and it is, I believe it is, then why would we say and do some of the stuff we do because no good could possibly come from it, right? Our life is never going to get better 
because of that negativity. Our life, we're never going to get healed because we're negative. It's not, it's not, the universe never says, well, you have finally been negative enough in your attitude. OK, you get to be healed. It doesn't work that way. Right? You know, so here's what I think is, would be helpful. Say, well, you say, well, if my life isn't governed by external things, right? and in the science of mind, we want to be internally guided, governed, directed. What is it governed by if I'm not going to be governed by the things out in the world that I see all the time? How about a sincerity of purpose? How about a commitment to integrity? What if we um, had a, a continued thirst for spiritual knowledge or a dedication to, to high ideals? You know, a mental atmosphere is produced by the kinds of thoughts that you and I think. And that energy draws unto itself thoughts and ideas that are most like its nature. This is why positivity and success breeds positivity and success. And negativity breeds more negativity. You know, consider for a moment the thoughts, that thoughts are as important as the action. See, I think people have thought, well, you know, if I don't take action on it, it's not a big deal. But the fact is now we're trained in mental science here. We know that there's a law that's responding. So just because you think something, you know, you're not off the hook. We used to think, well, if you did something, then you're on the hook. But thinking it counts in metaphysics, right? So the other day, I was thinking, um, you know, each of us, we probably live in two worlds. That there's an inner world, which in the science of mind, we teach is the world of causation. Causation comes from within. And then there's the outer world, what we see, hear, feel, touch, taste. This is the world of effect. And I think we do ourselves a great disservice when we act like the only world we live in is the world of effect. So many years ago, Victor Hugo, um, is, he said something that, that is often misquoted. Um, th that the idea that we've heard is that nothing is so powerful as an idea whose time has come. Now, he said something close to that, but that was not actually what he said, and I'm going to tell you what he said. What he actually said was, an invasion of armies can be resisted, but not an idea whose time has come. And I thought that was great. I think, okay, now that to me is even more powerful. An invasion of armies can be resisted, but not an idea whose time has come. So what's the idea whose time has come for you? You know, it's probably been rattling around for a while, you know, kind of tempting you, trying to bait you, trying to interest you. And so this is what I would invite us to do today, is to start to think about what's the idea whose time has come for me at this point in my life? Am I willing to ponder on that? to mull it over, to meditate on that. You know? and, and at the same time, what is one idea that it's time for us to completely let go of? See, because I think that's also equally important because when we let go of something, when we heal something, when we release something, there's room for the universe to bring something new of a higher order in. See, our good idea could completely change uh, our lives, a good, one good idea. You know, I, I, I say this a lot, but uh, you know, I read all the time, and I always read for content. I almost never read just for fun. Now, I don't, when I buy a book, and I, I, I'm kind of obsessive about this, um, I, um, I don't look to agree with the whole book. I'm looking for the one idea, because I know if there's one idea, one thought, one suggestion of a way of being, that if I incorporate that one thing into my life, it can make a huge difference. You know? And you think, oh, well, how can one idea? But it, you know, it's like when you cook. If, if you cook something and you put no salt in, it's kind of bland, isn't it? But then at some point, you add that tiny bit of salt, and everything goes, wow, that's fantastic. What, what, what a flavor this has now. So I would hold that that flavor was there. The greater good was always there. It's just waiting for that one idea to be added to it. I think all the, all the spectacular things we see in the world started with an idea. You know, so, so here we are, it's still fairly early in the year, and I'm gonna suggest, because we are Angelinos, and Angelinos love diets, I'm gonna suggest a little diet for us as New Thought students. Um, because you know, if you are, if they say you are what you eat, but I think you are what you think is even more uh, accurate. Consider this type of mental diet. I want that, that what you feed your mind consistently determines the whole character of your life. That what you allow yourself to think, you become. What you allow yourself to think, you become. So it is affected and will affect every area of our lives. Our body, our relationships, our health, our money, our finances, our creative expression, you name it, on and on and on. So 
what we do is you choose the conditions of your life when you choose the thoughts upon which you allow your mind to dwell. Dwell is the important thing here. It's not just a, a thought. It's where your mind kind of takes up residence again and again and again. So, because you can't have one kind of thinking and a different kind of experience in life, right? One, it, it just doesn't work that way. But if you change your mind and keep it changed, which is where the work is, keeping it changed, that is when conditions must change too. If I change my mind and keep it changed, conditions in my life will change. You know, uh, if, if you want to be up, if you want to be full of life, you know, and ready for love and opportunity, then you have to feed yourself a better quality of thought. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, St. Paul said that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Renewing, newing, new. This means we're putting something new in here. You know, we are not renewing our mind by rehashing the old stuff over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. we're not in other words, what I'm trying to say is you're not transformed by cheating on a mental diet. And people say, well, I'm just in a bad mood today. Well, where did it come from? You know, I mean, let's take a little responsibility here. Where did that mood come from? It's not like there's mood hulking around the universe looking for a place to land, you know, like I'm the bad mood. I'll heave myself onto you. It doesn't you know, that, you know, it, it came from inside of me. Now, I'm just in a bad mood. Oh no, here comes the bad mood. That's not it. Look, I can choose again. I notice I'm in a bad mood, choose again. You know, you have the mood, the mood doesn't have you. And what we do is we so often act like the mood has me, right? Well, this, I'm, just, I'm just in this mood. I'm just in this mood. Snap out of it, <laughs> right? You can do something about it. You can. Absolutely you can. You have to train yourself to choose what you're thinking at any given time. You know, if you want, to be, if you want a happy, worthwhile life, which I believe is what God intends for all of us, you know, you have to begin right now to train yourself in what you choose to think and control that. You're in charge of your mental state. You're in charge of your mental spiritual household. You will be amazed at what you learn about yourself. So now, here's the big idea for today. This is the big idea. For one week, I want to encourage all of us to be devoted to building a new thought. It could be a turning point for you, right? So make this important. For one week, I'm going to ask each and every one of us to not dwell on the negative. Hmm? What do I mean by that? Don't focus on the sickness, the failure, the disappointment, the trouble, the criticism, the resentment, the jealousy, the lack. You may only think what's positive, optimistic, affirmative, life-giving, now, if at the end of a week you are miserable because you have been so optimistic, then you are more than willing, you are more than, a, you have absolutely my support in picking up your negativity again. Just embrace it and saying, no, no, I liked life better when I was just a big old Eeyore. You know? You know Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh? He's the little donkey that it's always raining on, you know? It's like, oh, Eeyore. Right? See, see now, Thoughts will pop up, absolutely, but do not entertain or dwell them. So when something that you would normally, you know, like we see somebody's name come up on our phone, right? And we go, oh, it's them, <laughs> right? You know what I mean. Don't, you're in church. Tell the truth. Don't act like you don't do this, you know? So you either say, no, I'll call them later. Oh, I'll text them because I don't really want to talk, you know, or that kind of, but I'm just, what I'm inviting us to do is for one week to change your mind about that, right? And so how, how are we going to do that? How am I going to change your mind? So we do this prayer in a lot of the classes I teach called the love prayer. And basically it's, I accept you, I bless you. I accept this, I bless this. So again, just for a week, we're going to do a lot of accepting. We're going to do a lot of blessing silently. You don't have to tell people, I'm accepting you. That usually doesn't go over very well, you know. I, in my high spiritualness, accept you in your foul negativity, you know. And don't think that acceptance means I'm condoning or agreeing with. It's just acceptance, okay? 
So, so this is not like I agree with somebody's bad behavior or their snarkiness or anything like that. Another thing to do, so I bless you, I accept you, I bless you, I accept you. Think about God instead. Say the Lord's Prayer. Think about things you can be grateful for. Forgive somebody. Forgive something. Forgive yourself. Do something life-affirming and constructive. Don't give the negative any power for one week, just one week. And if it's too much for your whole life, I'm going to ask you to pick one area, one person. One situation that every time you think about, you know, it gets your hair up on the back of your neck and you get a little about it. Pick that. Pick that. And just for one week, one week, nothing but your accepting and blessing. I accept you. I bless you. I accept this. I bless this. You know, if you think, well, I just don't think I'm that negative a person. Here's the challenge. Turn on the TV. Turn it to a news station. I don't really care which one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just, and just notice what comes up in you. Because you'll see where the little dark places in consciousness are. You know, or, or go for a drive. Yeah, get on a freeway. So I'm, the invitation is for people to not give the negatives power for one week. I believe that we would transform if we could really, really do this. Because what you focus on increases, right? So if we're not giving any attention to the negativity that other people spew, that we spew, the negativity that's in the media, if we're not giving attention to that, what are we giving attention to? That which is life affirming, that which is positive, that which is building up. Then that's what increases because what you focus on increases. Energy goes where energy flows. If you're on a diet, you know, you don't meet friends at the bakery, right? I mean, just think about it, right? If you're a diet, you, say, you don't say, well, you know, I'm on this diet, it's really hard. Oh, you want to meet at the bakery? Great. You know, you're just setting yourself up for sabotage. So it may be that for one week, you have minimal conversation with the very difficult people or the very negative people. You know, because you know, what you'll notice is this will stir the pot. I guarantee this will stir the pot, and that's good. That means there's movement. And movement can be the precursor to having some healing. So don't tell anybody you're doing this. Don't say, I'm trying to refrain from all negativity for one week, because immediately you'll be met with negativity. Okay, you know that. You know they will. You know they will. They're going to come back and say, oh, yeah, how's that working for you? Good luck with that. Blah, blah, blah. That just sounds like denial to me. Remember, nothing said or done by anyone can throw you off, right? You get to choose how you respond in all situations. So we have for one week, I accept you, I bless you. I accept this. I bless this. And I promise if you want it back at the end of a week, you can be your most negative self and see how that works. Let's pray. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so we turn our attention inward now for a moment, remembering that we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit, that the presence of God, the wisdom, the love is right here where we are. We are all emanations of this most high God made in the image and likeness of our father, mother. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us today, and I declare that healing is happening on every level, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And we are wide open and receptive and welcoming of that healing. I know that it is absolutely the order of the day for each and every one of us to release some negative self-talk, some negativity we have about the world we live in, and embrace a more loving, holistic, uplifted approach. So I accept this is so for each and every one of us, that the days and week ahead, we are on the affirmative side of life, that where we've had just a, ne a habit of being negative or small-minded or not in a great space, we give that up for one week, just one week, and we are open to having healing and transformation in every area of our life. So we include in our prayer today family members and friends, parents and children, all of those people we love. We see them in our mind's eye, and we remember that right where they are, God always is, surrounding them, filling them, meeting needs, healing. 
We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So all those things that pull at our attention that might make us fearful or feel separate, we say God is there even in the center of that, that right action is taking place. There is healing. There is infinite supply. All needs met. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. Synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams and all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together. And so it is with an open, gracious, full heart that I give thanks that this is so. And I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.